Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about multi-level analysis in R using the LME4 package. Specifically, I'm going to demonstrate a random intercept model, a model that includes fixed level 1 predictors, and then another model that includes both fixed level 1 and level 2 predictors. The data set that we'll be using is high school and beyond, which can be found in the Mare Tools package. If you haven't already done so, you're going to want to install the LME4 package and the Mare Tools package. So you can use the install packages function in this way and in this way for, for both of those packages. Also, the text file that I have open contains all of the commands that I'm going to be using in this particular demonstration. And I will have it available to you for download underneath the video description. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, uh, it, once you've installed the two packages, is to call up those packages to memory. So uh, right here, this is essentially, I'm calling up the Mare Tools package using the library function. And then right here, this is using the library function to call up the LME4 package. So again, the Mare Tools package contains the data that we're going to be working with. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to actually just go open up R and type in library Mare tools and hit enter and we can take a quick look at the data itself this is it right here there uh, are a lot of cases that are included um, in the data set but if I want to take a quick look at the structure of the data set I'll just go ahead and type it in I'm going to type in HSB uh, using the structure function which is STR hit enter and so you'll notice that I have uh, a set of variables we have school ID this is basically the level 2 uh, unit identifier. We've got uh, variables such as minority, female, uh, SES, math achievement. Math achievement is actually the level one outcome variable and for this particular demonstration we're going to be using the female variable and SES as level one predictors. The level two predictors in our model are going to be school type and mean SES. So uh, if we want to take another look at the actual structure of the data, we can also use the head function right here, and we'll just type in HSB. And so that gives us the first few rows of our data set. So you can see how it's uh, structured a little bit easier than what we had done um, uh, in our initial step. So you can see there's our school ID, variable, minority, female, SES, and so forth. Okay, so next, after we've done this, we're going to want to call up the LME4 package. So I'm going to type in library LME4, and we're good to go. So we'll start off our analysis with a random intercept model. So the way that our syntax is laid out, first off, you'll notice that I'm creating an object in R called model1. So we have an arrow pointing to it. This is just basically a less than sign and a hyphen. And everything to the right of this is basically containing our model information and all the details to run the model. So we're using the LMER function that is associated with the LME4 uh, package. So uh, if we don't have that package called into memory, then we can't use this function to run our analysis. So next, you'll notice that within the parenthesis, we have the dependent variable math achievement. That's our level one outcome variable. Uh, a tilde, which is basically denoting that our dependent variable is a function of whatever's to the right. So you'll notice that we have a one right here and a plus, and then inside the parenthesis, a one, then a vertical uh, line, and then uh, the school ID variable. So the one is reflecting the intercept, and then so this is essentially reflecting the, the fixed component for the intercept, and then the random portion of the intercept, or the random varying intercept, is reflected with the one vertical line and the school ID. So this right here is specifying that we're allowing the intercepts to randomly vary across schools. You'll see that uh, following the comma, we have REML, which is restricted maximum likelihood, and it is set to false. So if, we, if it's uh, set to true, then we would be using restricted maximum likelihood estimation. With it set to false, we're using standard maximum likelihood estimation. Then you'll notice that so we have data equals HSB, which is uh, the data frame that, that contains our data. And that's what we just called up from the Mare Tools package. 
On the next line, you'll see that we have summary, model one. So this is going to get a summary information for a model. And if you want confidence intervals, you can use this uh, function right here, C-O-N-F-I-N-T for confidence interval and model right here. So in carrying out these analyses, I'm actually just going to do a lot of copying and pasting from this text file into R uh, to expedite things. So I'm copying this, and I'm going to paste it in and hit Enter. And just kind of looking at our output, you'll notice that we have, you know, basically our model information, what we've typed in, the data. This is our name of our data frame. You'll see that we have the AIC, BIC, log likelihood, deviance, and so forth. So a lot of the standard information that you get when you are running HLM. You'll notice that we have a section for random effects. So basically, uh, the name of our level two uh, variable is school ID. And you'll notice that we have uh, the intercept. That's the name of our parameter. Um, and basically, we have the variance of the intercepts across the schools. Um, which in the context of a random intercept model is just basically the variance of the means on our level one outcome variable. So it's basically the variance of the means across the schools. The standard deviation is just basically the square root of the variance here. The level one residual, uh, the variance uh, component, the, uh, the variance is uh, this number right here, and then this is the standard deviation. You'll notice that we have description of the number of observations, the total observations, the number of groups, which was 160 for the number of schools. We have fixed effects, and then we have essentially the name of our parameter, in this case is intercept. Uh, then our estimates, standard errors, and t-values, and so forth. And then down here, you can see we have the confidence intervals that are given. And the one that to mainly key in on if, we're, if we were uh, interpreting this is probably going to be the intercept, the confidence interval for this. So this is the 95% confidence interval um, that is formed around our, our, um, our estimate. Okay, so that's basically... Um, uh, the most of the information for the random intercept model. I do want to just take a quick side note and say that if you wanted to calculate the interclass correlation coefficient, um, you could uh, easily do so using the Mare Tools package. If you didn't want to do this by hand, you can use the Mare Tools package. And this function, ICC, is associated with it. So you'll notice that we have outcome equals and then the name of the dependent variable at level one, math achievement, in quotation marks. The group... Uh, it set equal to the school ID variable, which again, that's the level two um, variable reflecting group membership. Then we have data equals HSB, which is again, the name of the data frame. So if we calculate this, I'm gonna copy this and paste it in and hit enter. And so you, you can see right here, this is the uh, ICC for um, our random intercept model. Okay, so next up, let's add some level one predictors. So in this case, I'm creating another model, just calling it model two, and the structure is largely the same. You'll see that right here, I've got the uh, intercept. These are the two level one predictors. And remember that basically all of the predictors um, and so forth are separated by plus signs. So you'll notice that we have female right here. That's uh, the first level one predictor, level one predictor SES. And then we still have, we're still allowing the intercepts to randomly vary across the schools. And so, and our uh, maximum likelihood estimation is still set. There's our data frame name and so forth. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in. And so now you can see uh, in this particular case, again, this is the variance of the intercepts, standard deviation of the intercepts, uh, the residuals at level one, standard deviation of the residuals. Uh, right here. You'll see that now we have female, and then uh, this is our estimate right here, and SES, which is our estimate right here. So basically, these are the regression slopes for, again, female and, ma and for SES. So basically, uh, given that this coefficient is negative, this variable is coded in the direction of uh, male being zero, female being one. So uh, basically, what this would indicate is that females uh, scored lower on math achievement than males. And then SES, uh, basically students with higher levels of SES or higher in SES uh, tended to exhibit greater levels of math achievement. So you can see that we have our T values that are given right here. 
And you can basically see that uh, both of our predictors are statistically significant within the model. So that's basically um, the, um, our Model 2. If we want to compare Model 1 and Model 2, or basically determine if there's a significant increment um, in explanatory power from Model 1 to Model 2 by adding in the Level 1 predictors, we can use the ANOVA function right here. And you'll see that I've got Model 1 and Model 2 that are following. So in this case, I'm just going to copy this and paste it in as well and hit enter. And so you can see model one right here. We have model two that's given right here. And you can see that basically we have our car, our uh, change in chi-square from model one to model two. And you can see that this is statistically significant. So there's our little three stars right there um, uh, indicating that we have a significant improvement in fit as a result of including the level one predictors. So um, again, you could use the confidence interval uh, function if you want to uh, obtain those for the, um, the uh, parameter estimates in the model. So there you can see there's our intercept, female, SES, and then we have our 95% confidence intervals for each of those. Okay, so next up what we'll do is we will add in uh, two between, uh, between school factors, which is school type and mean SES. And the school type variable is actually reflecting whether a school is public or private. So uh, a code of zero on that, the, on that variable is essentially designating a public school, a one designating private. So you can see that we basically just added to our previous model uh, with the level two predictors included. So everything else is exactly the same. And so now I'm using the summary function down here to look at model three. And if I wanted to see if there was a significant increase in fit between model two and model three, we can use the ANOVA function right here. And then down here, you can also see I'm using the confidence interval function in order to obtain the uh, interval estimates uh, for the predictors in the model. So I am actually just going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in and hit enter right there. And so you can see that now we have everything. So once again, we have our entire model and everything that we've, we've put in. Uh, data, again, H, uh, HSB. We have our, again, the standard fit indices, AIC, BIC, et cetera. Uh, with random effects, you can still see that we have uh, the variance of the intercepts, standard deviation of the intercepts, uh, the level one variance, level one standard deviation. And uh, you can see now we have, there's female SES and our predictor school type and mean SES right here. So basically, um, as you can see, all of these are statistically significant in the model using our T values, you can see that. So again, basically females scored lower on average than uh, males when it came to math achievement. Uh, students with higher SES uh, tended to perform better in terms of math achievement. Students uh, with school types, students in uh, private schools tended to do better on math achievement than public. And then students in schools with higher mean SES tended to do better than those um, in schools with uh, lower mean SES. You can also see that in terms of the um, the chi-square uh, test right here. This is the uh, our p-value, and you can see it's indicating significance. So between models uh, two and model three, there was a significant uh, increase in fit as a result of adding in the level two predictors. And then down here, again, we have our um, our predictors, and along with the 95% confidence intervals. So that uh, pretty well concludes this uh, demonstration, and I hope you found this video useful. So thanks for watching.